Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. My name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon, and today we have a special guest, Dr. David Fiorella from State University of New York, Stony Brook. He's an interventional neuroradiologist with extensive experience uh, regarding cutting-edge minimally invasive therapies for cerebral aneurysms. He's going to give us a talk first regarding his experience and will then answer your questions. David, thank you for being with us today, and please go ahead. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, today, and I want to try to share with you over the next uh, 20 or 25 minutes or so why I feel so lucky to practice in this field. It's, a, it's really an amazing field to be in, especially right now. It's uh, incredibly exciting and technologically driven, and what I tell people is that Every six months, we get some kind of new technology, and we're able to do things that we never would have imagined were possible six months or a year before that, and that keeps happening over and over and over again. And what that means for our patients is that we're able to offer people minimally invasive treatments for their aneurysms, many of which could not be treated otherwise or certainly wouldn't be amenable to minimally invasive therapy before. And so I'll just take you through a little bit of the history of this kind of and to where we are today and show you what we're able to do uh, now uh, at Stony Brook with, uh, with brain aneurysms. So uh, I'll just review a little bit about the, um, the basics of brain aneurysms, and a lot of you uh, know this, unfortunately, because you've experienced it or your family members have experienced uh, uh, aneurysm subarachnoid, aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage or aneurysms. Um, so brain aneurysms are common. Uh, 150 people have an aneurysm. And Whenever I give this talk, if it's in a, in a large enough group, I'll say it's likely that somebody in the audience actually has an unruptured brain aneurysm. Certainly a much higher rate presenting to a group like this where there are some. The annual rupture rate is a 8 to 10 per 100,000 patients, so we see quite a few ruptured aneurysms here in Suffolk County. Uh, it's most prevalent in young people, so the average age is between 35 and 60, and 50% of the patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage are younger than 50. This is a disease of young people. And more than 40% of patients with ruptured aneurysms actually end up in fatality. And uh, four in seven who actually recover have some significant disability. And there are 500,000 deaths per year worldwide caused by brain aneurysms. And unfortunately, most patients have no symptoms prior to their time of rupture. So when we see unruptured aneurysms in the, uh, in the office, there are a few things that we can do with these patients. And in fact, most of the patients that we see with aneurysms, we actually don't treat. They undergo observations. So smaller aneurysms, aneurysms that are extra dural, we just watch those over time, make sure that they don't grow or change or start causing symptoms. However, once uh, the aneurysms are large enough, uh, or if they're starting to create symptoms, there are a few options that we have for treating them. Surgical clipping is certainly the tried and true option for, for treating aneurysms, and this has been around for years and years. Uh, however, over the past uh, 20 years or so, They've developed some minimally invasive manners uh, with which to treat aneurysms. And endovascular treatment is the way that I'm going to talk about today. So that's treating aneurysms through the inside of the blood vessels. And probably uh, some of you here in the audience have actually undergone that procedure, which started off by driving a small microcatheter, as you see here, into the aneurysm and putting coils into the aneurysm, treating it by packing it full of platinum coils so that the blood flow can no longer get into the aneurysm. The aneurysm eventually clots off and heals up. When aneurysms are ruptured, we don't have the op option of observation. We have to treat them. And we usually treat them either by surgical clipping or endovascular treatment as well. And in fact, uh, when we look at endovascular aneurysm treatment, you'll see just from the, uh, these next slides exactly how fast this has evolved. Uh, the treatment of aneurysms through the inside of the blood vessels is something that started or was in its infancy in the late 1980s when we were using things like balloons to actually put inside aneurysms and attach. It wasn't until 1995 that the GDC system was approved, and that's what's depicted here. So the first detachable coil system was approved in 1995 for general use, and this is really when the endovascular treatment of aneurysms took off. And if you think about most advances in surgical techniques, a lot of these have occurred you know, in the 60s and 70s. This field really only started in the mid-90s, and so that shows you how new the field is. So it was in its infancy at that time. And then there was a rapid evolution since 1995 coiling systems and adjunctive devices of our catheters and wires and imaging systems, making our procedures much safer and making what we're able to treat much more broad. So we treat many, many more aneurysms now than we could when we started, and the results are much better. So after coiling had been around for a few years, people started to look and 